this is Donna. We're here doing our Positive Conversations podcast today, and I'm with my partner. David. He's David. I'm Hi. David. Hi, David. Hi. I hesitated because I didn't know if you were going to say my name. I know. Or just point at me. I did it different. I didn't say I'm Donna. There was a Donna. bit of a mix-up. It was yeah. a mix-up. We were so confused. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, what it's are you new, doing, Donna? new world. We have to restart. Maybe we should. should no. Should we restart now? No, no. Okay. So normally we say something like, this is Positive Conversations. I'm Donna. Yeah, and uh, this is Positive Conversations <laughs> of David and Donna. I'm Donna. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So Every we're just time. mixing it up a bit. Well, see, that's a good way to stay positive in your life, not to get in a Mix rut. things up. Yeah. Yeah, I always say... Um when I was still in college, every day I'd take a different path to class. I love that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I had a college class one time, and I made sure to sit in a different spot. It was a smaller group, maybe 20 people, and we always sat in a circle. And so I sat by a different person every time on purpose. And oh. I, I know a lot of people were kind of like, that's my seat. But I just that's wanted to... Nice. But... <laughs> people definitely get in ruts very, very easily. Mm-hmm. For sure. So... That's a cool thing to do. Yeah. Just talk to different people yeah. and see what comes out of those conversations. Speaking of conversations, <laughs> you you know exactly what we're going to talk about today. I think we so. We got here and you were and I was like, so what about positive conversations? You're like, I got that. <laughs> Don't worry. I do got that. So I'm going to reflect back to our last one, which of course when I was just gleaming, beaming, whatever, gloating all the words all together about uh, LSU's national championship. And they had the huge pep rally at LSU yesterday. And I did not attend. I, I felt like I didn't want to fight the crowds, but my husband and I sat and watched all three hours worth of the coverage on TV. That was exciting. But um, during the podcast where I talked about that extensively, one of the things you said was that you just don't really like athletes, you know, thinking back to when you were bullied. Oh, yeah. So we, we talked about um, how experiences lead to the emotions that we carry. So mm-hmm. do you want to talk more about when you were bullied? Um, well, you know, when I, when I put it like, oh, I don't like athletes, maybe that's a little harsh. I mean, like I, but it's just, it's, it's the common stereotype, you know, the, the guy who likes to do podcasts and, and, and talk about comic books gets bullied by the people who play baseball. I've said for the longest time that I never met meaner people than the people that were on the baseball team. That that was just a thing. And, um, but the more I think about it, the older I get, like, I realized that that was all, um, a, probably a lot of, um, like one specific event that made that emotion stick to it. So every time that I'd see an athlete or whatever, it's just, Ur! and, 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 you know, that's why I maybe that, maybe that's why I could not care less when you would talk about LSU football. Cause I'm just like, uh, one time in middle school, blah, 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 which when you really think about it, that's just not a way to, to live. I mean, that's, that's kind of, do you have a memory of a specific event? I have multiple memories of specific events of being bullied and more often than not, it was by the jock athlete, popular kid. Um, it's, I mean, that's, it, that's the common thing you always hear about, but, um, what's your youngest memory about that? Uh, th- second grade, probably, mm-hmm. probably second grade. Now, when you right now as a 19 year old, uh-huh. think about, um, seven year olds, think about it. Yeah, seven, you're right. No, you're year-old. right. But no, there's a whole lot to this. There's, um, so much of what I listen to is about the beliefs that we have in our mind are set from a very young age. And so something will happen to you at a young age and your brain registers at registers it as this is how the world is mm-hmm. and it sticks and you don't realize that this has occurred. And if you can go back to the seed of it and go, wow, there was that one time I picked this up and my mom slapped my hand. And from then on, you know, that you just get the memory. Now I have honestly never been able to pinpoint anything like that. I just can't do it, but I know that there are specific things in my in my world that I've been able to overcome just because I do sit in meditation and try to let things work themselves out. But I don't. I have never personally gone to that one memory where I'm like, "Whoa!" Like I remember that one time and and how it just like has shaped everything since then. 
And so when you said that about uh, not liking athletes because of that, it just makes me think about that whole process that we go through. I mean, we come to the world with our brains wide open and there's a, a complete cycle basically of us limiting our brains down to where we can function in this concrete world that we come to as a spirit you know and part of that is shaping this is how the world is and once you get that thing set in your head that this is how you react to everything and so your shaping was very different from every other shaping of any other human being in the world mm -hmm. that's the fascinating part because we can all live through the same exact experience and have a completely different reaction to it based on our history Right. That's very true, you know, that's a perfect example. I played football. Right. Um, I, I played football, and um, I wasn't half bad at it, I like to think, but I just had no interest in it while playing and had bad experiences while doing that, that ever since I stopped playing football, because I used to love sports, but I stopped playing football in like seventh grade, and since seventh grade, I can specifically remember that's the time that I stopped going outside. To hang out with my friends. I mean, I still went out to like exercise, but like, I didn't go outside to play football. Um, I instead I'd rather stay inside and read comic books, and and that's but that's when I really sort of defined my actual interest was whenever I realized that um, because of the experiences I had, I didn't like sports. I just I didn't. Um, okay, so back up a second. What? Why did you ever play football if you didn't want to play football? Uh, my dad played football. So did you do it because you thought you should? Because he pushed you? What was it? Um, I did it because, like, I knew people did it, I guess. And it's like a, I knew my dad played and, um, I had friends that played sports. And also, uh, a big reason for it, I specifically remember that I really wanted to get on a sports team was because going through, uh, bullying as somebody who isn't on the sports team I was like maybe if I'm on the sports team maybe if I can get get up to that level I can you know surpass all of that and, and so you're looking for a certain status I guess you could say so yeah mm -hmm. um that that was a big reason I specifically remember um the reason I played basketball and football I never played baseball but I played basketball and football a lot uh in middle school was because I was, like, trying to reach that, like, status of, like, I play a sport, so will you leave me alone now? Like, I'm, I'm just like you, but I, I, I wasn't. Um, and I had to go, but I had to experience it to know for sure. And what I realize now is that going through and playing on these sports that I know now, in hindsight, I never wanted to do, what it did lead me to realize was that I, what I really wanted to do. That's when I started making YouTube videos, too, after that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I was, like, got a camera, you know, for... My birthday, I was asking for a camera and and, and a computer and, and stuff like that. And that's when I started making YouTube videos. That's amazing. So right uh -huh. now, if you had the opportunity to just go to some go to a gym with some friends and shoot some hoops, you would just like, nah. I mean, I'd go, but I'd kind of watch, probably. I mean, uh, you just, just despise out. the whole, all of it, every bit of it. It's just not you. I don't despise every bit of it. If I'm playing with, what I have learned though, is if I play sports with my friends, my actual friends, they're fun. Like, I, can, I have fun, like, pl shooting shooting hoops or whatever, I'd do that, but, um, so yeah, I would go and, and I would I would do that, but I just really have found that, like, I just cannot stand sports, and I think a big reason that I'm so, like, over sports is because people who tell try to tell you that you're supposed to like sports and I'm like I specifically remember like what like beginning of high school when I didn't want to go play football when I'd rather stay inside and read a book or play a video game mm -hmm. and people being like f flipping their freaking crap about like what the heck David but you gotta come play football come on loser it's football don't you love it don't you love football and I'm like, no, I don't. And who would say that to you? Just people that I used to play sports with that I no longer play sports with. Like so my, they were your friends? Yeah, they, quote okay. unquote quote my unquote friends. friends. Yeah, okay. and then also like um, family members who were like, you know, like um, I don't have like bad family members who were pushy, but I had, but they were like, you got to go outside, you got to play football, you got to do that. And I'm like, I just don't want to. I'll go outside and like exercise. Like I wasn't an unhealthy kid. 
I was, I was very, I was like, I did like, I didn't want to be like fat and a loser, but like loser, not because people are fat, but because like just sitting in my room, not doing anything all day. I, I did stuff, but I just didn't want to play sports, but people kind of forced it down my throat. And so it stuck with me. And, and then seeing, maybe that's another reason I really hated like the jock idea is because like I see them playing and it's like. There's there's a sense of jealousy in there too, of like if I played that if I did that then I, then they would leave me the hell alone and um, and like you know, like I said people just being people get really cocky when they play sports sometimes sometimes some people and then that contributes to them just being mean people, I mean like some of the worst people I've ever met like that I consider like that person is not a very nice good person, it just coincidentally I guess a majority of them were on the baseball or on the football team. And, and a lot of their ego was very much fueled by that. Mm-hmm. And But at the same time, I had an ego being in theater, you That's know? That's what I'm saying. So... Mm-hmm. That, that definitely is not... But also, I never, you know, punched people. So <laughs> then maybe there's a difference there. Well, when you think of uh, Breakfast Club and how the athlete was just so pressured... Mm-hmm. So many of them are like you're you're describing the pressure you felt and you were really not an athlete, but so many of them are like the dads like you're gonna have to go up there oh, yeah, and sure. live up to my rep and And whenever you, know. you talk to them, you know, and I've I've been there too when I realize that I talk to people that I think are different and a lot of times there's a lot in common to be found. But then sometimes at the same time, you know, that's the common trope that I see is like, if you just talk to him, you'll find so much in common. That's true. But at the same time, the other 50% of the time when you talk to them, you'll find out, oh, everything that I thought about you is true. That's happened to me plenty of times before where like people that are different than me that are, that are, you know, maybe I think are like the popular kids or whatever, which now being at a high school, I'm talking about all this through the context of a high school kid as somebody who is now almost 20 years old I realized that all of it was relatively pretty dumb and what I mean by that is that I have the um the hindsight to realize that like everybody is like the same and that none of it really matters what I was thinking and what they were thinking and that if we could all just be on the same page of like who ca- if everybody just shut up and like who cares then it would be then it would be fun, and I have the I have the understanding also that like I shouldn't have wasted my time worrying about that because I, I still do something you know like my anxiety gets to me a lot and I think about these things that happened and it's just like it just boils and gets me but I, I'm able to say like it's whatever it's fine it's fine and take that step back and, and yeah. recognize the negative thought that's repeating and and tell like like I keep saying when you see it just like nope switch it to yeah. And I, I will say aloud, no matter where I am, I'm like, nope. And I, I, can, I can feel it coming into my head. I can feel it causing tension in mm-hmm. my body. I'm like, nope. And I, I will think of anything opposite, you know, something positive. So mm-hmm. I would like to jump in and say a few things. I was an athlete in high school. I played, uh, on, well, I, I would say I was on the basketball team. Oh, when, wow, I hate you. I know. So when I was in junior mm-hmm. high, I actually got to start. And uh, when I moved to high school, I didn't. And in fact, I rarely played in high school. I stayed on the team all four years. But um, I was, you know, you go to practice every day. It's one of the classes that you take. You go to all the away games. Well, just all the games. And I, I, I did that. I don't feel like it was really even a part of who I was much. Like, people didn't look at me as, you know, that basketball girl. But mm-hmm. I, I did that. So that's part of my history. But um, one of the things that I'll talk about as far as, like, people having the same experience and f- having complete opposite emotions about it is so fascinating to me because... I've seen that in myself, like as a very young teacher, I would come home from school sometimes and just be so mad I could hardly see straight. I mean, just, just boiling angry about what those kids did in the classroom. And I would just be so mad mm-hmm. and I sort of figure out like what I'm going the next day and get those kids under control and whatever. And then I'd come home the next day and I would not be mad. And so my brain started going, hmm, you know, th- this is nothing to do with anything but your reaction, just straight up. Mm-hmm. It's how I reacted to it because it's not like on a day-to-day basis, the reaction or the behavior of my students was that different. I just realized that it's how I perceived it. And so, I mean, it's not like I, as a first-year teacher, was a very calm person. I was working toward it, but I, I mean, I would yell and try to get people to be quiet and 
I mean, it, it was a really, really difficult transition. It was, a, I, I, somebody asked me after my first year what it was like, and I said I survived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got through it. And, of course, someone who is now in her 31st year, it's just so interesting to, to say those words, but you do have to find a way to get through it. And um, what I chose to do instead is to just look at the situation from a broader perspective. And at the time, I was working with a coach who ended up working, I want to say, almost 50 years. Like, he just retired. But he said in the lunchroom one day that, you know, a lot of people always talk about these kids and it, these kids are the same. It's just that you come in and you have this idea about how they should act and you get cynical over the years and they don't change, but your reaction to them does. And that really stuck with me. And I still feel that way. In fact, we were discussing something in my class uh, Friday and um, I told my students, I said, you know, so many people look at teenagers and think about how they're, you know, mouthy and how these attitudes and whatever, but I, I absolutely don't. To, to me, young people, teenagers, they are looking around at the world they came into and they're like, you know, I don't want this to be the world I grow up in. And they're, they're the vanguard, they're the, they're where the change starts. They, they have so much life ahead of them. And I mean, of course, this doesn't apply to every single one, but that's just how I feel. I, I, I really like to encourage the students that I teach, whether they're, you know, 15 or 18 or any, you know, I even have some that are younger and older than that, depending on the situation. But, you know, this is, this is the age, you know, you grab life and you run in a direction. And I, I as a 54 year old, I still think that way. And I, I, I strive to let that be part of who I am as a teacher, you know, mm -hmm. but there are many teachers that I work with and regardless of their age who come in daily with this bitter face and uh -huh. get these kids in line and that yeah. kid said this to me and, and it just makes everything worse it, the, everybody including the person who's doing mm -hmm. that hates the class hates yeah. the whole experience yeah. when i look back on a lot of teachers that i quote unquote hated a lot of them i could realize okay i was overreacting in a big way like they're just doing their job but then at the same time i look back on a lot of them that i hated and i'm like yeah no i was pretty uh, i think i was right being a 10 year old who thought like wow you're just a bitter like because mm -hmm. like people and it's and, and I'm not, i don't want to like pick on anybody but it's usually what i found it's like these older teachers who have been doing it for a long time gotcha. and have just become so numbed faced mm -hmm. to it all and like cynical cynical and stuck in the old ways mm -hmm. of however they do as they taught mm -hmm. back in like you know 30 years ago and and they're the ones who i i, th I look back and i'm like God, you were so mean for mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. reason. And and didn't really contribute in a positive way to your no. education at all. You just no. had to endure it. I don't remember anything they taught me. Right. I remember one I remember this I remember one thing. I learned that the eye has a membrane in it. What what? I remember that from a really, really mean teacher that always like shouted in my face. Mm -hmm. And yeah, mean people. Um I had a thought while you were talking, uh Oh man, I think I lost it. Uh, you were talking about um, all these kids that are sort of had these these lives ahead of them, and they're the same, and and a lot of them are the, they're the same, and they're all they're trying to figure things out. Yeah. You know, teenagers are just trying to figure things out, and that's how I look at. It. Like I, I think I, I don't know if I talked about it before on this podcast, but when I'm talking with my little sister, I have this understanding of like she's just a kid trying to figure things out. And when I look back on the hindsight, I realized that I really did know absolutely nothing. And I was constantly in an anxiety attack. Uh, I think I saw something that um, teenage, the average high schooler today has the same brain patterns as a mental patient in the 50s. That's like, scary. if you compare them, it's the same. And I think it's very much become like a, um, what I see in high school, this, this conversation has been all over the place, but I think it's interesting. What I see in high school is... Um, uh, kids, what I see a lot are kids who are so focused on like, you're talking about the pressure. You have the athletes who are like, maybe all, maybe they're mean and they're cynical and like, and, and everything because they're so focused on like, I have to play. I have to be good at the sport so that I can get a scholarship to college. I've seen so many people being like, being so dramatic about it too. Like, y'all don't understand. This is my ticket out. And it's like, what? You live in a mansion. Like what? Like, it's like, but they just have this idea in their and head. probably shoved down it is shoved in it is shoved down their, down their yes. throat from their yes. dads who played football and want to yep. live out their life and yep. i know we're coming up on our time but let me get this out um and at the same time you have the kids who like 
are killing themselves over their freaking ACT scores and their grades. And just today, a, a girl I work with, she's a senior in high school, and we were talking about it, and I was like, let me, just a word of advice. Like, she had like a 26 on her ACT score, and she's like still freaking out. I'm like, just calm down for a second. Realize that, did you get into the college you wanted to get into? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. It is what it is. You're going to go to school and it's like, it, it, this, just relax. And, and it's, I hate seeing that like people have crammed in their heads so hard. And, and I'm sure you see it in high school too. And that's, that, that influences the way you teach of like, all that matters are the scores on the paper. And it's like, what about the kids and how right. they feel? Or what, are, or what are they learning and taking into the world and, and making it better? I saw an article where kids were like, if they volunteered to get pepper sprayed, they would get um, a bonus to their GPA. And what what hit me in my head was that the problem here is that kids are doing this and it's because they've been taught that their GPA score matters so much that they should be pepper sprayed in the face because they've been told that it, they, they, they actually feel like they have to do this or they're going to end up in a cardboard box. It's like the character we wrote in high school and the end of the test. Um, that te Sharon, was that her name? Yes. Uh, yeah, it yes. was. Yeah. Who had a big freak out and, and about like, if I don't get a blah, 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 then I'll end up in a cardboard box with a guy named Joe. And if I don't get a good grade and it's like, and, and that's a joke, but we base that off of the stuff that we really saw every single day. And if we all just realize that we're all like every, everyone, if everyone is calmed down every once in a while, then um, I don't think this kind of conversation would have to be had. <laughs> well, that can definitely lead yeah. us to next week. So I'm yeah. going to say that next week we need to talk about just dealing with the pressures of our society uh -huh. and we can focus on high school students. But I do have to ask you before we stop, mm -hmm. who was going to pepper spray people? Um, the a pol police station, I think it, it was. It was something offered to a high school? It was something, I think it was like, um, I, th from, I think it was like, there was a criminal justice class. Okay, it was just and more of a question. It wasn't something they would have ever actually done. No, 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 they did it. They did it. Oh it was, God. um, it was a high school. It was like a criminal justice class. And I'll show you the article. I'll pull it up and I'll link that in the description too. So that way it's there. Um, it was like, I believe what it was, it was this criminal, criminal justice class and they were learning about stuff and they were in them like learning about like pepper spraying and like, they were like, Oh, want to see what that does to people? Hey, I have an idea. Let's get students. And if they volunteer to be pepper sprayed so we can show our criminal justice class what it's like, we'll give them a bonus to GPA. And it's like, mm. that's such a horrible thing. And like, if there, there are pictures like kids doing it, they're doing it. And it's like, what the frick is wrong with you? That's awful. What person in their right mind? It's awful that the students feel like they have to do that. I agree with you. Uh, the whole thing, uh, that seems illegal to me, but that's a different they, they, they were signing Still. stuff. I don't Still. know. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> so, <laughs> moving past that awful image, uh -huh. we do want to end on a positive note. So, I will say that the thing that I really wanted to focus on today is how we all have different reasons for what we believe and there's never a right or wrong but the way you choose to react to things can absolutely shape whether you have a positive or negative reaction or thought about things you you, you get the choice even mm -hmm. though it seems like you don't you do get the choice of how you react to whatever comes your way so sometimes taking a look at why you do have such a negative reaction to something can help you maybe wash that out and just think hey you know i might not love what everybody else loves but i also don't have to hate it and feel so negative about it so i'll just end there and say thank mm -hmm. you so much for listening to our positive conversations today hope you got something you could use out of it i've been donna and i'm david stay positive